Hey guys, I know what you're thinking as you look at your iTunes downloads. This isn't Friday. Why do I have a horror movie night episode? Well, I've got an answer for you. It's because of John Snitzer, who did a documentary called Haunters, The Art of the Scare, which is currently on Netflix. And I watched this last night, and I've been talking to John for about a week because I definitely wanted to promote this as much as possible because I've been kind of following this production on Facebook for a while. So we were able to schedule it out, uh, and we're pretty much going to be dropping this as soon as the interview is done. So, John, thank you so much for, for jumping on uh, kind of last second to talk about your movie. Thank Haunters. you. Thanks for having me. Um, so I'm going to I'm gonna cut right to the chase, John. Um, let's talk about Russ. <laughs> because... <laughs> Because I got some real concerns about Russ. Uh, Scott, did you get a chance to watch the doc? I know you were at work trying to see if you could work it into the schedule or not. No, I didn't get a chance. I'm so sorry. But I will watch it immediately upon finishing this. <laughs> okay, so, Scott, you might actually know who Russ is. Uh, John, how about you tell people a little bit of who Russ is first? Well, you know what's funny is when I started filming the documentary, I didn't know who Russ was. And I didn't know anything about McKamey Manor. But it was after filming for a while um that all of a sudden i came across these videos of uh of uh, russ mckamey's mckamey manor and i was like what's mckamey manor because I, I i saw these videos that looked they look like snuff films they look like people are getting killed inside of a haunted house it's like watching i and i said this to you when we were talking yesterday your interviews with russ and all of the footage of Russ's place is like I'm watching the fucking Pekin tapes. <laughs> like this is I mean, nightmares. This is nightmares come it's to kinda, life. Yeah, it's like it's like looking at a real live Rob Zombie movie happening, and especially like I mean the movie when 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 haunted houses make promo videotapes or promo uh, films to be like, hey, take a, take a look at our haunt. It's going to scare the hell out of you. And th there's a lot of great ones out there all across the country that are like really gorgeous, really. And they, they do such a good job of giving you the, the feeling of what it could be like and, and showing you like, this is, you know, and it's always way worse than it really is, but they do a really good job of capturing, you know, an atmosphere and Russ's videos make it look like you would never want to go there in a million years. Like, and he keeps saying, you don't want to come here. This isn't for you. This, you, you don't want to do this. The amount of times he says, you don't want to do this. And I kept, th I'm looking at the videotapes, of these people screaming for help and they want to get out and they're covered in blood and guts. And I'm, I was like, what the hell am I looking at? And I kept wondering, who is this person? Who's the, who's holding the camera? Who's making this? Who's editing this? And I look online. I'm like, okay, here's a video that goes on for four hours of someone trying to get out of this one guy's haunted house. And I, I couldn't believe it. And I thought this all must be fake or I don't know what I'm looking at. And anyways, I emailed him because I thought at least it'd be interesting to talk to him. And then he called me like one night around midnight. It's like, Hello, you called me. This is Russ McCamey doing a whole like scary voice, and I was like, yeah. I'm like <laughs> I was like, you know what? I don't need doing this. a scary voice. I, sure. I told him right away, like, I don't need this, dude. <laughs> I don't need it. <laughs> I get it. He's like, don't, don't need what? Don't get what? And I was like, all right, um, you know, I want to film you. And then, as the more we were talking, the more, you know, he, you know, he was really hesitant to have me go film him. A lot of the uh, people who put on these haunts were very hesitant to have me go film them. And I get why, because usually when you go film a haunt, look at the videos you can see online when people go through with a flow video, it just, I got nothing against flow videos, especially of things that aren't ever going to happen again. They're nice remembrances of what happened, you know, but it also destroys everything. It's like filming an IMAX movie with, um, with, with a with your cell phone <laughs> you know it's like yeah. what well, wait a minute wait a minute <laughs> um it was much it was more cinematic than that i it, i wanted to i wanted to film these things the way that they felt you know if if it feels dangerous i want it to feel dangerous when you look at it and and i mean I, it's been a long this is this documentary made me feel dirty and that's weird because <laughs> it's not it's not like like there are parts in this doc where I feel like I just watched a fucking war film. Yeah. And it's and it's all because of Russ. And it's there's something about him that's that's so unsettling at times and then other times super charming because you have these moments 
where you ask him, like, why do you do this? Like, what, like, what do you do this for? And his answer, and it seems very sincere, is I enjoy rewatching the footage of them being scared and pissing themselves. And that's like fucking psychotic to say. But then you're also charmed. <laughs> you're also charmed by the fact that, like, he doesn't accept payments. He only gets paid in cans of dog food to donate to, like, local dog shelters. And, like, that this is all for, like, in a weird way, it's for a good cause. But it's like, like, Scott, I'm not sure if you've ever seen the footage of this guy's haunt, but this is the place where, like, there you're in a tub of water and someone's holding your head under the water for like 25 seconds what? and pulling you back out like it's straight torture it's a, oh, you have to very, sign a, a very long waiver but you know <laughs> think of it this way too guys the thing to think about is this the one of the reasons too why why russ was in this movie be, uh, is because especially when i started filming this something was happening in the haunted house industry that had never happened before oh that's this, That's the, this was yeah. The, I don't I don't, I don't judge know, you for know, doing this at all. This is what a documentary filmmaker oh, is supposed to do: is you yeah. saw a, a once in a lifetime thing happening and need it to get it captured because, on film. Yeah, but the, because it's not just it wasn't just that. Okay, it's it's definitely that this guy's do. You, you hear people going, "Well, how far is too far?" And then you see this, and and I immediately go, "I would." You're like, that's how yeah, far too I, far is. Yeah. <laughs> My immediate reaction is I would never do something like that. I would never go through something like that. But then, of course, there's Blackout. And Blackout, you know, has been around for – was around for years. Uh, that was the first extreme haunt of all time. came out in 2009. And that's the first time where, you, where we heard that naked people were going to grab you and waterboard you. And once it was announced that naked people are, are waterboarding you, they were a giant success. And there was a line around the block. And it was really interesting because I was like, wow, why is that? Why did that become such a big deal? Because I love haunted houses. I love horror attractions. I've been going to them since I was a kid. You know, I grew up in Southern California. So not Scary Farm, Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights. I've been to every single Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights um, ever since the start of it out here. I'm a huge fan because i look at haunters as wow you have to be an artist you have to be a director you have to be a promoter you have to you you have to be so good at so many things to pull off something that gives you the illusion of danger without actually hurting you but then there's something called extreme haunts that come out and then there's something called interactive immersive theater where in an interactive immersive theater where you can be touched where you can be separated from your group, where you're going on a whole nother adventure. And it's really amazing. You, It's not even like the normal haunt. You went through something that was creepy and fun and scary, but it's even more scary when you tell your friends about it later because then you're telling them what happened when you were separated from me. And I tell them I was kidnapped. And then I was put in this fr- And like, what happened? And I had to escape. And the next thing you know, you're sharing a story and that story is an experience and it's experience that you went through and you start getting the chills. It feels like when you're a kid having a campfire story, but instead of ghost stories, you're talking about what just happened to you five minutes ago. And then extreme hunts throws all this out the window and goes, okay, yeah, yeah. It's an immersive area. You'll be separated from people. We're going to touch you and we might even shock you and waterboard you and force feed you things. And, and it goes on from there. And so to me, I was just like, what is going on in the haunt world? I noticed so many haunters, like the really upset about what uh, the extreme haunts were doing. They weren't just upset about rust. They were really upset about blackout. They're upset about any haunt at that time. They were upset about any haunt that touched you at all. If they touched you at all. And so I wanted to capture this moment in time because my feeling is who knows if this will ever happen again? Who knows if this could lead to the end of haunting? Who knows what? I wanted to capture it. And I also wanted to capture what it is to create one of these things because the art of the scare, the one thing I'll say, but and you can ask me whatever you want, but the art of the scare, the art part, art stands for sacrifice because to create one of these things – if you want to do a really good one, a really amazing one, one that people won't shut up about, you have to sacrifice all your time, time away from your family, time away from work, all your money, everything you have. You've got to put it into this one thing. And even then, it's going to be very difficult for you to stand out because there's so many people out there doing it. You have to do it because you it's a, a passion. You love it. And most of the people in this community are the most incredible people on the planet. 
and I love him so much. And it, but, but when you bring out someone like a Russ McCamey and McCamey Manor, when you bring out something that's that dark and twisted and when you just at face value is, that darkness really brings out the light in the industry in the most incredible way. When you hear stories like Charmaire, um, uh, my fa- legendary uh, scare actor, my favorite haunt monster of all time, you hear her stories about how she loves to scare the hell out of people and it warms your heart. And you want to give her a hug. <laughs> no, she's great. Yeah. And that's and that's what I really liked about the documentary overall is that regardless on if I agree or disagree with Russ or Blackout's methods, you you do cover this giant wide spectrum where you get to see, you know, you see Russ, who like the fact that all of this is being done in his actual house is like mind blowing, but we'll ignore that. But you talk to Russ and you talk to these people who do blackout, but then you also talk to Char and you talk to um is it Donald? Donald. Donald, Donald, yeah. who are these people who have a passion for for doing it a very specific way and you do get to see the two different lines that are drawn and at the end i do have a definitive opinion you know what i mean and i think that but i don't think you present a definitive opinion of course there's but definitely, my, there's yeah, definitely you're exactly, no, right. You're exactly yeah. right i i did not want to point my camera at people so i can exploit people so i can judge them and go and then and they have a have, have me narrate it afterwards and tell you exactly how to feel like this is wrong and this is why. You know what I want to do? I want to pr- present every single side of the story. And I also wanted you at at least one moment in the movie to at least identify with everyone for at least one moment to go, oh my goodness, that's that that's the connection. That's the human side of this person. Because and, and, and you know it's not black and white. We're in life and life is gray. But by the end We've given you enough information and historical context showing where these extreme haunts even sprung up from, which I thought was interesting and no one's ever ever brought up before. Showing all these different things. When you put it all together, you're going to not just have an opinion. You're probably going to have an argument with a friend. Oh, absolutely. Because I'm sitting there and I'm agreeing with Don when he's like, oh, that that extreme stuff, that's hacks. That's what hacks do to get a scare. And I'm like, you're damn right they do. Like, that's like, because like for me, I love the art of like, you don't have to. Uh, well, I'm going to I'm going to give a, a shout out to there's a there's a place in Salt Lake City of all places. The best haunt that I've ever been to uh, Nightmare on 13th Street. Have you ever been there, John? No. Tell me about it. OK. I know that you've talked about how you want to kind of expand this project and cover a bunch of different places. Put them on your list. So this place is a giant castle that they've built on the middle of the main street. And I was talking to one of the people about it, and they are open for the month of October, and that's it. And they make enough money in the month of October that they can own that property all year round to rebuild the entire interior for an entirely new walkthrough haunt experience. But... They are very strict on the no touching rule, but they have giant animatronic gargoyles and dragons that are like spitting fire and a huge like 30 foot crocodile (laughs) and a nightmare room. And it's like all of this stuff that they've built. And it's in Salt Lake City of all places. Like It's like the least like if you had to make a list of all of the places where you think the best haunts would be Salt Lake City wouldn't even be on that list. And they have the best haunt I've ever walked through. I got to check it out. I mean, the thing though, that's the thing with haunts is that every single place that has a haunt has something special to that place. Think about, you know, the uh, abandoned locations, you know, that, that, uh, I mean, even in LA, when when delusion, delusion is an interactive haunted house play where you're a character playing a part. And is that, what's the, um, is delusion the one where they like, it's literally like weeks long and they'll be like no, calling that's not, your that's phone. That's not delusion. Like, oh, you're thinking about the, uh, the tension experience. <laughs> that's, yeah. Whatever that's that the is tension. where they're like, they yeah. kidnap, yeah, they kidnap your friends and family and like hold them hostage while you're doing this, this not fucking exactly like that. No. <laughs> not exactly <laughs> like that. No, it's more, a little, it's, it's artistic. It's fun. It's, it's immersive <laughs> theater. No, no, no one's kidnapping your family, you know, but, uh, <laughs> don't try and walk it's it back all right it's like, just a <laughs> midgen slander no it's not like, there, there's there's a great episode of i think it's shockwaves or killer pov one of those two shows that actually talks all about it and it actually it sounds like something i would never do but it sounds really yeah. interesting how no, they, 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 how do, they, they do, do a good show but like delusion is put on by john braver and it's and he was a 
a stunt man for years and worked on some of the biggest, some huge movies. And, um, so he's, he's putting together a story and you you go through it. You're going to get separated from your group and you might be alone in a room with these characters and there might be an amazing stunt where someone flies down from the second story right at you. But he always picks old historic buildings. He picked an old abandoned church one year that was you know really creepy. And he, the, the, he lets the space dictate what's going to happen to you. The attention experience, that's done by Darren Lynn Bowsman who directed uh, Saw 2, 3, and 4. Um, he did Crow's Blood that was on El Rey this year. He's really a great artist. He does a lot of fun stuff. And what he did with Tension was, yeah, you're going to be touched and you're going to be interacted with, but they also did things that were so personal and and interesting. He, he did a, um, a panel where you went to go meet the people behind Tension Experience and he hired someone else to play him. And no one knew he was in charge of it. They, they, they just made it look like this. Some, this is the guy who's in charge of tension experience. And during the presentation, he wanted to know everyone that was going to be in the audience and you had to sign up ahead of time. And then they went into their Facebook pages and took screenshots of their Facebook pages and things. And then were projecting things on the walls from people's personal accounts and had, they had people had no idea that this type of thing was going to happen. You know, so look, there's, there's some really wild and interesting and creative things things that people are doing out there that's uh, that's really interesting and this is an interesting time because like Jason Blum says in the movie you know people are we're always used to being on our screens we're always used to being on our phone or looking at a, we're always looking at a screen you know and it's interesting to get off of social media to go experience something that really f- gives you a rush and even and even lets you face your worst fear ever <laughs> and then you survive it. And then you, what do you do? You go right back to the screen on social media. You talk about it, you argue about it. And, but, but the, the, there's a the big question is, you know, how far is too far? And that's what one of the things I really wanted to focus on because it's, um, it's fascinating to see, Oh, you know, even that there was a conflict between McKamey Manor and blackout because, a lot of people just assumed all extreme haunts were the same. It's like, nope, they really aren't. Everyone is going after something different. And and I think anyone watching this can see why there's such an importance for having a safe word in any attraction. Except for McKinley Matter where they don't have safe words. <laughs> I must have, must have asked him like 100, 200, 300 times. And now do you want to have a safe word? He's like, no. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> Please have a safe word. Please. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I, I don't want to give too much more away about the doc, but uh, guys, it's on Netflix. I, I don't know how long it's on Netflix. I'm sure John has a little bit more information on that, but let's pretend that it's not going to be there for long and like watch it right away. Knock that thing pretty high up on the list because it's actually a really well-made documentary. And John, you're, I mean, I'm not sure how long you've been doing the documentary thing, but this is damn good. It's a damn good movie. And that's why I wanted to have you on to promote it. Thank you so much. No, this is my first feature film. and Well, you knocked it out of the fucking park. Oh, so. hey, hey, congrats on getting on fucking Netflix with your first feature <laughs> like, film. Yeah. That's huge. That's pretty wild. Look, it was a lot of, it, you know, it, it was cut after cut after cut. I mean, the first cut I had was an hour and 48 minutes, and I had a lot more haunts. I think in the first 30 minutes, you met 11 different haunts. <laughs> and... Then throughout the film, more haunts kept piling up and he kept re-going back to the different haunts. And it, it got to the point where it was like, I should have called it Hauntastic. It was like the Dio of haunted house movies. It was like, you want haunts? I got haunts for you. It was way, <laughs> way too much haunt. And what was funny was when I showed some of that to haunted house fans, they were just, they went crazy for it. They loved it. And when I showed it to um, people that, aren't into haunting and aren't into Halloween, they were bored to tears. They hated it. Yeah. And I was like, wait a minute. I have, I'm not just making a haunt video yearbook. <laughs> I'm, I need to, if you make a movie, there's gotta be a reason. And we've gotta, it's gotta be cinematic. There has to be a story. There has to be a thesis. And then we have to chase after that. And we have to get, take you through an experience where you actually get to learn something. And, and and go through something, not just, you know, here are all these amazing haunts that I love. It's more like, okay, here are these, here's some of, of, of this, this uh, here's a, a subculture of haunting. 
here, here it is. And here's what's going on in there right now. Here's the conflict. Here's the story. And what's interesting is people, when we got to this cut, people that were not into haunts and Halloween that actually I was looking for people who hated Halloween. And I would even find people online that would even just, just be like, you know, saying things like that. <laughs> I was like, okay, God, this person should watch my movie. And so I was showing it. Wait, to- wait, wait, wait. This is important. There are people that don't love Halloween. <laughs> uh, Scott, what? Scott, watch the documentary and you'll learn about the phrase Hollow Widow, which I am a huge fan of now and have started using all the time. Well, you just invented the word for- now because it, it was actually ha- Haunt Widow, but ha- Hollow Widow I think is hilarious. <laughs> no, Hollow Widow is what it should be. Haunt Widow, which is uh, the phrase for the the significant other of someone who's involved in a haunt when you don't get to see them for the entire month, the of, month October. of October. Right. <laughs> wow. That was the thing. You know, if you're in a relationship with someone who um, – this is what they do. You know, they, they love Halloween so much and they, they love creating haunts. Um, and they, but that's not the same thing. There's a Venn diagram here. You're right. You're, you're, you're right. You're right. You're right. Over, over, like I love oh, no. Halloween, but I would you're, never you're, work all, all, all October. In no, 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 you're totally, I mean, you're not, you're not creating something, you know, but I, I love the, uh, there's a really great scene with Donald and his fiance, uh, arguing over, how Halloween's going to play out when they have kids where the wife, want, the fiance very much wants him to stop doing his haunted house and take the kids out trick or treating. And I love his response of they'll get a dad at Christmas time, but yeah. Halloween yeah. is like Christmas time. <laughs> He's like, I'll be damned if I, I'll be damned what? if I give up haunting for some kid is what he said. And, uh, <laughs> wow. I mean, I feel like his Christmas is going to be like Silent Night, Deadly Night anyway. He's going to be the, the grandpa who's like, Christmas Eve is the scariest damn night. Well, the, the Donald, <laughs> what's funny about that is, um, but to go back to another point first, then I'll tell you something about Donald. I, this cut, for people who hated haunted houses and hated Halloween that watched this, they loved it. And after they watched it, they went to their first haunted house ever afterwards. And I, they would follow up with me and email me and tell me, I just went to a hunt. I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to more. And I was like, why, why did this make you want to do that? He's like, he's like, because it was like the movie was picking a fight with them and getting them to care about these people and go, well, pick a side. Are you into the extreme stuff? Are you into the traditional stuff? Is it more of the interactive? What are you into? And by the time they were done watching it, they were re- they realized oh I'm into more interactive stuff or oh no I'm all I'm I'm into the theme park haunt and for the first time ever they would actually buy a ticket and go so to me that was like I felt amazing hearing that you know we're we're actually getting people who hated Halloween into going to haunts and some that are now yeah that's your Oscar basically is I getting love it. someone to do that yeah Look, I, all you want to do is to be able I, I see these memes all the time of people that are like um. Freddie and Jason together and they said this could be us but you're not into horror movies and it's so true it's like you want you want to get you want to get the person that you're with or you want to get your friends or your family to understand why you love something so much sometimes you have to frame it to them in a different way not just go this is what we love and this is what we love this is what we love and it's like okay now I'm bored to tears you got to give them something that actually uh, starts a debate anyways um uh, so Donald that part with Donald and his wife um, so Donald, Donald's wife, uh, Jamie, she really didn't want me to, um, to film them at all because she just didn't want me to encourage him to do any haunting at all. She's already had enough of the haunt <laughs> and his whole family loves what he does and is very supportive of it. And she's like, okay, this is enough. And I, so I've known Donald actually since the sixth grade, um, I've, we grew up together. And there's actually a photograph in the movie where he's talking about being a monster at the sixth grade haunt at La Madera Elementary School. And I'm in the picture with him. I'm the little the kid dressed as Freddy with the glove and the, the skeleton shirt. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> and so I know his story very well. And I knew that it would actually be kind of an, an intense but also incredible story to share. And his wife... When I finally, it was a, the, the day that the two of them are standing in front of his house for the interview in front of his mother's house, that was my birthday. So my birthday present was I'm going to get an interview with the two of you right now. And what I captured was a 38-minute argument. That's them having an argument for 38 minutes. 
<laughs> you I might so win good. people over to you might win people over to to haunted houses, but you won't win people over to marriage. <laughs> no. like, it, was like, it was the fun. Like I, there were times where there's actually a part where I laughed so hard um, during their argument that I started crying and I'm trying to ask the next question and I couldn't get any words out for at least it was like a minute and a half where I just couldn't stop laughing. Cause I didn't realize that Donald um, throughout the year scares his wife, hides around the house and scares her. Oh, that story's fantastic. Yeah. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. So you're upset that she's not more supportive of you doing haunted house, but throughout the year, no matter when you are scaring her and he shares one story in the movie, but then he went on and there was story after story. I was like, well, laundry day. She's like, yeah, laundry day. Yeah, it's like, oh, he likes to hide under the pile of laundry. <laughs> because like every opportunity to scare her um, is a big thrill to him. But what's funny is he had – I thought it was going to be a different story with Donald in the movie because he has a haunt. There's a haunt across the street from his, uh, from his haunt. So he's been doing this haunt for like a decade. There's a haunt across the street. And I was like, wow, you guys must be really close. You know, that haunt across the street. He's like, I've never talked to that guy before. He's the competition. I was like, what? <laughs> what did you just say? <laughs> and then I filmed Donald talking about the guy. And then I filmed the guy talking about Donald. And Donald builds everything. He builds this crazy maze that goes from his mother's driveway through the side of the house, through the back of the house, through the house, and then through back in the front again. And there's, it's just out of control, the amount of stuff he builds. And, you know, he's got a great background for building props. He did the props in Van Helsing, you know, the, that crazy crossbow in Van Helsing. He did the, the oh, identity nice. scans. In, yeah, like yeah. he did the identity scans in Minority Report. Like this guy knows what he, so when he builds. Oh, like, man. Yeah, his props are insane. You are. <laughs> his props are. Like, I, I think that it's great that I'm actually the, the straight man on this episode where, like, I've never <laughs> seen the, the, the doc. And you're just, like, winning me over with everything you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's amazing I mean, when you hear about all that stuff. But then his neighbor, you know, buys all his stuff at uh, Halloween stores and conventions and off of catalogs, which is awesome, too. Like, I'm looking at his neighbor's place, and it looks like he spent like $100,000 on the most expensive theme park props you can have. And for me, as a Halloween fan, I'm just like, oh, wow, I can go to this haunt and that haunt on the same street. And it's so exciting, and it's totally different. But Donald was like... You know, he buys all his stuff and then the guy across the street, you know, who's got such a great little hunt with it that he puts on with his daughters. He's like, well, we just love Donald. I just he's so creative. You know, we're, we're trying to be <laughs> he was like, we're trying to be more violent and gory as well, just to step up our game. And what, what, what was funny was then the next day uh, when I wasn't there to film, uh, Donald introduced himself to the guy and he told me, you know what? Actually, he's a really nice guy. And I, I don't know what I was thinking. I was like, oh, wow. So now now you decide to meet the guy that I'm filming. And <laughs> we're going to keep the more the juicier footage. Sorry, yeah, Donald. It's, all, it's funny because I'm not even I was just like, OK, well, there, there goes that. But I filmed his neighbor a lot. It was funny. His neighbor's haunt was really cool. And um, I still I have that footage. I still want to do something really cool with it. There's so there's so much Basically, the hardest part about a movie is you're just like, oh, man, I really should just do six hours, <laughs> you know, like uh, episode after episode after episode. And that's really my goal is to do a TV series. And that was my goal from the start, really. But um, but anyways, I, I thought if I'm going to do a movie, it needs to be visceral. It needs to uh, capture the love that people have for this. It needs to capture the emotional aspect of it. It has to actually capture how difficult it is to pull off one of these things. And then we have to explore things that no one's been exploring from the haunt widows. From your, if your spouse isn't into this and you don't get to see them for the months on end to real fight or flight reactions to traditional haunted houses with the monsters and what monsters go through just to scare the hell out of you. And that's that's mixed in with, of course, the most extreme haunt on the planet. And when you put all of that together in one movie, it's it's funny, it's heartwarming, it's disturbing and shocking, and it's overwhelming. And then you leave, you know, in 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 a way where you're either, you know, having an argument with somebody or agreeing with somebody or just, you know, shaking your head. You know, it's really um, that that it, it's been a lot of fun to show this to audiences when we showed it at uh, Fantastic Fest. 
um, we were just we were just supposed to get a, a couple of screenings. They gave us three screenings, and we sold out. We we had this, uh, um, on the first Saturday of the festival, and Fantastic Fest is the largest horror film festival in America, and it takes over the Alamo Draft House in in Austin, Texas, and we had the biggest crowd and people, it was crazy. The reactions, they're laughing, they're screaming, they're cheering. And then people got into a line to hug Shar after at the end. And they were hugging this monster and telling her how much they love her. And it was, it was incredible to see that. And it's been incredible to see, you know, what we did at beyond fest. It's been great to see some of these critics reviews that critics that don't review normally review movies about this topic. I mean, film threat gave us a nine out of 10, you know, that was amazing. I mean, the fact it was great. The fact that we were nominated for best indie film uh, on Bloody Disgusting up against indie films like The Void, Creep 2, I mean, uh, uh, Raw, films that had hundreds of thousands of dollars behind them. This movie was made for way under $100,000. So, I mean, I'm, I, I just, I can't, I, I feel amazed. I, I feel so incredible. I'm just this is such an amazing moment because, you know, whether people love it or they hate it, they're talking about it, they're debating it, and it's uh, it's really exciting. Then that's why you make a movie. If if you make a movie that everybody is like, yeah, it's good, then it's, you just made wallpaper. You know, if you make well, that's you know, like there's there's a quote I always liked where um, someone said like, I'd rather make the worst movie of all time than the movie that everyone forgets about. Which I always think is like an interesting perspective of like, yeah, sometimes if you just make a movie that everyone agrees is strictly okay, then no one talks about that movie three months after it comes out. Yeah, I mean, look, you know I mean? Look, look, like, look at Tarantino. I mean, when Tarantino yeah. makes a movie, he has, he has people that love it so much and they're so passionate about it. And he has people that are just as passionate about how much they hate it. But one thing that yeah. no one can take away is his passion and his love and his enthusiasm for every moment that's in that movie. And I want to make sure that when I made this movie, this is my first feature film, but I'm a complete film fan. I'm a crazy cinema junkie. And I worship, I worship great movies and great documentaries. So my feeling was, if I'm going to make something, I want it to have that kind of passion and energy that just leaps off whatever screen that you're watching it on. And I feel really good because I didn't stop until I got that. And I, I feel really good that we got that. Yeah, it's so guys, go to Netflix, look up Haunters. It's made by what I would consider now a friend of the show. John, thanks so much for, for taking the time to join us. Uh, I know that we're probably going to cross paths again. I know you and I were already talking about maybe trying to get you into the Geekscape table at San Diego and... Definitely hit us up if be- you hit any of the East Coast conventions, because maybe Scott or I will be there. Uh, but keep up the great work, dude. This is a fantastic mm-hmm. documentary, and I want all of the people who listen to our show to go out and check it out too, because it, you know, it's very rare that you get to support one of your community. But I mean, this is this is from this is a horror fan. This is a documentary about horror fans from a horror fan, and you can't get more from your community than that. Uh, thing I really appreciate that. And if you go to hauntersmovie.com, go to hauntersmovie.com, you can see links to all of our social media. There's also, um, you can also see the trailer for the bonus features. Um, so if you get the movie on iTunes with the extras, or if you get the Blu-ray or the DVD, it comes with 30 minutes of bonus features. None of that is McKamey Manor because we have we covered that in the movie. <laughs> um, but the thirty minutes of bonus features includes more with Universal Studios, not scary. For, you actually get to go for a little while of not scary farm scare school and see how that what it's like when they're training their their, their scare actors. Um, you get more with Haunted Overload, the guys who build that amazing skull. Uh, you get more of their story, which is absolutely incredible. Um, more the bigger bonus names, feature- right? You have bigger names yes. in your bonus features than your movie. I, I, I have Slash from Guns N' Roses in my <laughs> bonus features. <laughs> like, my feeling was this. Look, when I made the movie, I was like, okay, I what's the most compelling story I can possibly tell in, in you know, an hour, in 88 minutes, you know? Um, and then with the bonus features, it's like, okay, I met Slash. I want to. I, I want. I, yeah, I want to have the most curated bonus features of all time because I'm tired of special features that when you look at them, you're like, they're not so special. <laughs> it's not why you even call them a special or bonus. It's usually 
the garbage <laughs> that, that, they, that they shouldn't have shown you the first time. I wanted to show you stuff that would blow you away. I mean, there's, there's haunt fans that are some that are really upset with my movie and they go nuts for the bonus features. <laughs> there's people who love the movie that love the bonus features because we're slowing down a bit and we're putting the magnifying glass on even when blackout teamed up with Blumhouse to create the purge live fear of the night. And a lot of stuff they did in that attraction end up making it into this purge part two, the, the, the second purge movie. So there's a lot of really interesting and beautifully beautiful cinematic stuff in the bonus features. But what's interesting is I cut way more than that. <laughs> I had, I had so much more that was already edited and ready to go. But you know, when you have to, this is something that's interesting. So for legal, if you're going to have bonus features, you have to have lawyers watch it and you have to have insur- you have to get insurance on it also, and they have to watch it twice. So if you're, if you're paying a lawyer to watch 30 minutes of bonus features, you're paying them an hour of um, the hourly rate. Um, I was going to give them <laughs> like, you know, 85 more minutes <laughs> of stuff that was edited. And I realized I can't afford it. I couldn't, I, there's no way. That I was like going to put you like way over budget. <laughs> I was already, dude, I was already way over budget. You know, I, 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 I did not let uh, the budget stop me. I was like, I'm just going to keep going. And then I, I found ways to make money while I was doing the movie and then keep funneling the mo- money back into the movie. I, I even, um, uh, I, I did a lot of things like I, I, uh, YouTube red studios hired me to put on a haunted house and that was awesome. Then I hired Char and Donald and all these other people for them, put them in, the, put them in there. And then I was able to, everyone got paid. And then I was able to actually put some, uh, additional funding into the movie again. And I just kept working it like that. It was, you had to do whatever you can do to keep something like this going because documentaries take a long time because it takes a long time to, you have, you have to film someone for a long time before you're going to get something. And the one thing you brought up to me on the phone before that was interesting was about interviewing Russ. Um, you were saying that, um, you know, that's some people are saying that this is just Russ as like a salesman. He's just trying to give off like this is how he wants to be seen. But one thing I'll tell you is with Russ and with a lot of other people in this movie, I would film them for so many hours. Russ, there was a, there were some interviews where I filmed him for, for up to six hours and it was when you film someone for that long then after some time, then all of a sudden it's you're, you're getting them talking to you and they're just talking to you. And I get away from the camera and we just lock eyes and we have a conversation. And those are the moments that are the most fascinating. There's moments where he's like, Hey, I got the scariest hunt. And he's selling it because if you go hang out with Russ in real life, that's what he's doing most of the time. But then there's the other moments, those kind of quieter moments where you start, hearing these other stories and and that's also when also more of the more interesting things came out um more empathetic things but also moments that were also the most shocking came out during those moments too where we actually revealed things about mckamey manor that no one has ever heard of before and um and it changes the way you look at extreme haunting also you know and it's it's all i don't know it's interesting Uh, the fact that at the end of these screenings and at the end of people watching it I always get so many people saying, I, I love the movie. I would never go to McKamey Manor. Um, and, and there's always one or two who are like, oh man, I got to I gotta do McKamey Manor. And I'm always surprised at who it is. Uh, Jessica Cameron has been saying she wants to do McKamey Manor. I'm, I'm like, oh, please, they're going to shave your head off, hair off. You're not going to want to do it. <laughs> it's like, it's so crazy to me. It's so interesting to see who wants to do it, who doesn't want to do it. It's, it's a... Uh, it's a trip. This whole thing has been a really interesting adventure and I'm really excited to see where we go, where we go next. All right. Well, thank you again, John. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. You're listening to the Geekscape Network. 